Eocursor was an early ornithician, one of the first so-called bird-hipped dinosaurs, a group which would eventually give rise to animals such as Stegosaurus, Triceratops, and Iguanodon. The morphology of the triangular teeth, not unlike those of an iguana, suggests partial herbivora. The tibia was significantly longer than the femur, indicating it was a swift runner. Lesothosaurus arms with hands that would not have been able to grasp properly, and slender tail all suggest that it was a fast runner. Like all future Ornithischians, its tip's upper and lower jaws were horny, forming a beak-like structure. Comparisons between the scleral rings of Agilosaurus and modern birds and reptiles suggest that it may have been diurnal, unlike larger herbivorous dinosaurs that were inferred to be cathemeral, active throughout the day at short intervals. Frutatens was probably bipedal and cursorial, and is suggested to have been omnivorous. It represents one of the latest surviving heterodontosaurids and it is the smallest known ornithischian dinosaur. Tianyulong has a row of long, filamentous integumentary structures on the back. The similarity of these structures with those found on some theropods suggests their homology with feathers and raises the possibility that the earliest dinosaurs and their ancestors were covered with homologous dermal filamentous structures that can be considered primitive feathers. Tooth replacement of the heterodontosaurus was sporadic and not continuous, unlike its relatives. It had three types of teeth, incisor-like teeth that were followed by canine-like tusks. A gap divided the tusks from the chisel-like cheek teeth. Scatellosaurus was lightly built, and was probably capable of walking on its hind legs. It had an unusually long tail, possibly to provide a counterbalance against the weight of the armored body. It is one of the earliest representatives of the armored dinosaurs and the basalmost form discovered to date. The body length of the holotype of Emosaurus has been estimated at around 2 meters. This represented a juvenile individual though, adult length has been estimated at 4 meters. The most obvious feature of Scyllidosaurus is its armor, consisting of bony scutes embedded in the skin. These osteoderms were arranged in horizontal parallel rows down the animal's body. Like stegosaurs it had a narrow head, which might indicate a selective diet consisting of high-quality fodder. It also bore primitive teeth and simple jaws, its diet would have consisted of ferns or conifers, as grasses did not evolve until late into the Cretaceous period. As Wyongosaurus is the most basal stegosaurian, it is morphologically distinct from later stegosaurid forms. Its skull was broader and had premaxillary teeth in the front of its mouth. All later stegosaurians lost these teeth. But like them, however, it bore thagomizer extending horizontally near the end of its tail. Tojangosaurus has the typical narrow and low head, bulky body, and low teeth of other stegosaurids. It had very distinctive back plates that are tall, narrow and triangular. The function of these plates has been much debated. The thermoregulation hypothesis has been seriously questioned, since stegosaurs as Tojangosaurus or Lexovosaurus had more low surface area spikes than plates, implying that cooling was not important enough to require specialized structural formations such as plates. However, it has also been suggested that the plates could have helped the animal increase heat absorption from the sun. The plate's large size suggests that they may have served to increase the apparent height of the animal, either to intimidate enemies or to impress other members of the same species in some form of sexual display. Gigantspinosaurus has a distinctive appearance with its greatly enlarged shoulder spines, twice the length of the shoulder blades on which they rested via large flat bases. These spines are thought to have provided Gigantspinosaurus with additional defense from large theropod dinosaurs like Synraptor, but the exaggerated size may have also served as a display function.
One theory on Kentrosaurus diet holds that they were low-level browsers, eating foliage and low-growing fruit from various non-flowering plants. It was capable of eating at heights of up to 1.70 meter when on all fours but may also have been possible for it to rear up on its hind legs to reach vegetation higher in trees. Decentrurus is considered to have the same proportions as Stegosaurus, its plate and spike configuration is known to be rather different, as it probably had both two rows of small plates on its neck and two rows of longer spikes along its tail. The most notable feature of Miragaya is its long neck, which was composed of at least 17 vertebrae. In sauropods, great neck length was achieved by a combination of incorporation of back vertebrae into the neck, addition of new vertebrae, and lengthening of the individual neck vertebrae. Given its size, Stegosaurus was equipped with an unusually small brain, it was once proposed that it possessed supplementary gray matter located somewhere in its hip region. This space, however, is more likely to have served other purposes such as a balance organ, or reservoir of compounds to support the nervous system. Stegosaurus could have maneuvered its thagomizer easily, by keeping its large hind limbs stationary and pushing off with its very powerfully muscled but short fore limbs, allowing it to swivel deftly to deal with attack. More recently, a study of tail spikes lends more weight to the position that the spikes were indeed used in combat. This study showed that 9.8% of specimens examined had injuries to their tail spikes. Only a few scattered bones of Warhosaurus have been found, making a full restoration difficult. Its dorsal plates were at first thought to have been much rounder or flatter than other stegosaurids, but it has been established this was an illusion caused by breakage, their actual form is unknown. The plates of Hesperosaurus are distinguishable from Stegosaurus for being wider than they are tall. It also has a four-spike thagomizer on the end of its tail, but the spikes seem to fit better when they are angled slightly backwards so that they point away from the body. Possible predators of Hesperosaurus could include theropod dinosaurs such as Ceratosaurus, Unlike other ankylosaurians, Minmi had horizontally oriented plates of bones that ran along the sides of its vertebrae, hence its specific name, paravertebra. It had long limbs, perhaps used to quickly search cover under brushes when threatened by large predators which might have been able to flip the small animal on its back. Although Antarctica in the Cretaceous was in the southern polar region, the Earth had a much warmer climate during this time period, and the continent would have been ice-free. Animals like Antarctopelta would have lived in forests of conifers and even deciduous trees. Mimoropelta is one of the earliest known ankylosaurs, providing a look at the early evolution and diversification between notosaurs and anylosaurs. Unlike ankylosaurids, notosaurids lacked mace-like tail clubs, instead having flexible tail tips. Hyliosaurus was one of the first dinosaurs to be discovered in 1832 and might have been a basal notosaurid, but much of its anatomy is unknown. However, it is often styled as a fairly typical notosaur, with rows of armor plating on the back and tail combined with a relatively long head. Gargoyleosaurus is a polycanthine dinosaur and had an arrangement of bony armor and spikes across its back and sides. Gargoyleosaurus also had a large bony plate that covered its hips from above. Gastonia lived in a partly wooded habitat, with riverine forests being separated by open areas. The climate was rather dry with a short wet season. It could have been so abundant because its armor effectively protected it against the apex predator of its habitat, the giant dromaeosaurid Utaraptor, remains of which have been found in the original Gastonia quarry. It would have shown a typical polycanthine defense, that have consisted of a combination of passive protection offered by the vertical spikes and active protection by hitting a predator with the horizontal spikes of the flexible tail. The spikes would have also made Polycanthus difficult to get close without a carnivore impaling its snout, and the sacral armor prevented a bite to the sacrum that could have paralyzed it. 
If the tail was also a defensive weapon, the sacral armor would have helped to prevent a predator from disabling its defense. Struthiosaurus was a very small notosaur, it seems to have been fairly common across Europe during late Cretaceous, a time when much of continental Europe was more like an island chain. By growing smaller, it would have been much less likely to exhaust the limited food sources. Zhejiangosaurus is not completely known, nor does it seem to show any special features beyond being a notosaurid. Notosaurus perhaps ate soft plants, as it would have been unable to chew tough fibrous ones, or alternatively it may have processed the latter with gastroliths and its enormous intestinal apparatus. Papasaurus was primitive in regards to its sensory abilities when compared to later ankylosaurs. Its sense of smell, while not as advanced as that of later ankylosaurs, was still more powerful and acute than many of the theropods existent at the time thanks to its large nasal cavities. Discovered at an oil sands mine, Borealopelta is remarkable for being among the best preserved dinosaur fossils of its size ever found. It preserved not only the armor in their life positions, but also remains of their keratin sheaths, overlying skin, and stomach contents from the animal's last meal. Melanosomes were also found that indicate the animal had a reddish skin tone. The discovery that it possessed camouflage coloration indicates that it was under threat of predation. The tail of Sauropelta was characteristically long and made up nearly half of the body length. It lived in wide floodplains around rivers that drained into the shallow inland sea to the north and east, carrying sediment eroded from the low mountains to the west. Periodic flooding of these rivers covered the surrounding plains with new muddy sediments, creating the cloverly formation. Edmontonia was bulky, broad and tank-like, the large spikes were probably used between males in contests of strength to defend territory or gain mates. Rings in the petrified wood of trees contemporary with Edmontonia show evidence of strong seasonal changes in precipitation and temperature, this may hold an explanation for why so many specimens have been found with their armor plating and spikes in the same position they were in life. Ankylosaurids like Shimosaurus is exclusively known from the Northern Hemisphere. These animals were mainly herbivorous and were obligate quadrupeds, with leaf-shaped teeth and robust, scute-covered bodies. They possess a distinctly domed and short snout, wedge-shaped osteoderms on their skull, and a tail club. They were likely very slow-moving animals and there are a few prevailing theories for ankylosaurid tail club function, like display or for defense against predators. However, Jonguensaurus lacked this club tail, even if it has been classified in this group. Ankylosaurus was probably the largest of its kind, its tail club seems to have been an active defensive weapon, capable of producing enough of an impact to break the bones of an assailant. The tendons of the tail were partially ossified and were not very elastic, allowing great force to be transmitted to the club when it was used as a weapon. Ankylosaurus probably fed on abundant ferns and low-growing shrubs. Assuming it was endothermic, it would have eaten 60 kilograms of ferns per day, similar to the amount of dry vegetation a large elephant would consume. The requirements for nutrition could have been more effectively met if it ate fruit, which its small, cusp-like teeth and the shape of its beak seem well adapted for, compared to for example Euplocephalus. Certain invertebrates, which the small teeth may have been adapted for handling, could also have provided supplemental nutrition. Euplocephalus head had a short drooping snout with a horny beak to bite off plants, its armor may have had a keratinous covering, or it may have floated in the skin, as is seen in modern crocodiles. Minotaurosaurus is known only from a complete skull of unknown provenance, but probably recovered from the Gobi Desert. While it had a distinctive armored bull-like head and a more primitive brain case, it shares the typical features of an ankylosaurid. The habitat of Pinacosaurus consisted of a semi-desert interspersed with oases. 
No large theropods are known to have inhabited the ecosystem, though smaller ones like Velociraptor were present. It has been suggested that its relatively light build was an adaptation to gain agility to better fight small theropods, the moderately large club being fast enough to hit these swift targets. The genus name of Talarurus is a reference to the club end of the tail which bears resemblance to a wicker basket. Cychania lived in a desert habitat, with sand dunes interspersed with oases. It was more robustly built than other members of the Ankylosauridae. Arbor pointed out that Cychania and Tarkia shared the same habitat. It's assumed that this relative Ankylosaurian abundance in species had been caused by them being the main herbivores in the area, enough crop thus being available to feed two populations, although their relative niches were unclear. The differences in head ornamentation would then have served species recognition. There is no indications of sexual dimorphism. Tarkia would have been preyed upon by Tarbosaurus. 